Hey guys, good morning, or good afternoon for most of you, I think, or evening. <laughs> okay, everything seems to be ready. Please let me know if you can hear me okay, there's no problems, and then we can get started. Ooh, I have some comments. Marie, Alex, hi guys. Alex. A few days holiday, great. Alex says sea slugs, strange animals, but great color. Yeah, the colors are what I like the most, and the shape is really simple, so they should be pretty easy to draw without having to trace or anything. Marie never even knew they existed. You get some amazingly beautiful sea slugs out there and um, seahorses as well. <laughs> okay, so you two have really gotten to know each other a little bit, which is nice. I'll give it a minute. So right now there's three on three of you online. I am still trying to wake up a little and I have some fruit which will hopefully give me a bit of energy. So I'll have that before I get started. But before I get started, does anyone have any questions for me? So the size that I'm doing today's drawing on is small so it's what I would call a5 I guess or 5 by 7 inches about that size. Camilla, hi Camilla, nice to see you. Okay, uh, yeah so that's the size. The paper I'm using is the Archer's watercolor paper, the 200 GSM I think. The no, the 185 GSM, and it's the smooth one, and it's it's a hot press paper. So that's the one I like using the most. And the supplies that we're using today is the uh, Prismacolor and Polychromos pencils. I'll show you an image of the pencil tray. So that's the tray I got, and they actually marker trays, so you can buy each individual marker tray which I think is actually way too expensive I think I paid um, maybe seven dollars a tray and it's just a piece of perspex plastic and when you try and clip them in together it gets stuck and it cracks and then you can't get them unstuck so you really have to force them together it does the trick but I would have hoped that for the price of every tray because I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten of these trays put together and to make up this whole thing and it's, it's I don't think it was worth the price I could have probably built something better myself but um it is nice it does work and then I have it on a little wheelie trolley so that it's easy for me to get access to I can have it right next to me it doesn't have to crowd my table um, so it's it just the functionality of it is just a little bit better for me and yes so on your patreon post you will have the outline for this if you want to use the outline or you can try and freehand it you will also have the um, blurred version of this and the yeah the blurred version and the outline version if you can't afford the the image let me know and I will email it to you and um, yeah, we'll see where it goes. Alex is saying she's sorry I have to get up this early. It's only once a month, so I can do it. It's not, <laughs> it's not easy. I was even thinking as I woke up this morning, I was like, what can, what kind of excuse can I put on Patreon? And I'm like, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. It's not fair. <laughs> I was for a second. I was thinking about an excuse to, to not be live this morning but 
It isn't very fair, is it? <laughs> Yeah, I need to go and grab a pencil and an eraser because that's going to be the first place we start. So last week's tutorial on, um, or last week's tutorial that I did for the those that are relevant to the U.S. time zones, it was also the size, and it was of a pink praying mantis. Oh, let me remove that. It was also the size, and it was of a pink praying mantis, and it took I think two and a half hours total to do the whole thing. So. Um, that was a nice amount of time and if that's how long this is going to take us then it's great We'll finish it all in one stream and I think this is actually going to be easier than the praying mantis So we'll see how that goes. So I have the image on my iPad in front of me like this so uh, My printer doesn't print the colors the way I like it and I couldn't be bothered doing research on how to calibrate the thing so I'm just going to work from my iPad. And then also on my iPad I have the blurred version and the outline. Um, so we'll be using the blurred version first, that's for sure. But for now, let's get into the outline. So Alex says, looks tricky to choose a color. Well, we're going to be using our swatches, so I'll show you how to do that soon. Okay, okay, so I have to remember to record with my DSLR this time. Which I did for most of the videos in last week's stream, but some of it got cut out because I didn't press record. The minute I hear that click, I need to press record. every time I hear that otherwise I skip on big gaps of like 10 minutes which is a big gap <laughs> okay now we're gonna start with the outline so make sure that you um, there it is make sure that you check the patreon post for the outline and then you can try this for yourself. So let's see here. I'm just going to put this at more of an angle. Okay, so the shapes of these slugs are pretty triangular. So we're going to work with the um, I don't know, the slug in the front, I guess. So you can see there's a, I'm not worried about getting an accurate size or anything. I mean, it's a sea slug. No one's going to know if I'm not getting the size accurately. So I'm going to zoom in for you. Okay. Um, that's, uh, that's as good as the lighting is going to get, guys, so um, hopefully it's okay. Okay, so when I'm tr trying to figure out where to stop on this side of the bottom part of the front slug, I'm trying to see where on the paper it's positioned or where on the screen it's positioned. And pretty much both slugs are in the center part of this paper. And I am just paying attention. 
I have an eraser, I can adjust, it's not the end of the world if I make a mistake. So a lot of people just fear drawing any line if it's a mistake and then they never get a drawing done. <laughs> Okay, so that's the bottom section and then I'm going to come back to the point over here. I can see a sh little pointy shape. So break it down into to various shapes and then there's a white sort of strip. So if you are uncomfortable with freehanding it, print the image in black and white. Um, use a graphite stick or your, your graphite pencil and uh, cover the back area of the print with it and then use a sharp mechanical pencil or an etching tool and you can transfer the image onto your drawing paper. So if you're not comfortable doing that, feel free to go ahead and do it the transferring way. <laughs> And I'm going to do that little squid-like antenna, or I don't know if it's their I don't know if it's their eyes, like snails. I don't know. <laughs> and remembering, you can always adjust. I think we need to adjust this antenna area a little bit higher. I need my it needs to be a little more of an angle. Like I said, I'm not worried about getting the sizing perfectly right because no one's going to know the difference. And this one is more towards this section. And then when we do the other slug, we might want to do some more adjustments. So you're just paying attention to subtle things as you draw. And the more you add in, the more you can notice if you need to rearrange something. I hope I'm not being rude that like every once in a while I'm going to have a piece of fruit. <laughs> I'm going to try not to sound too horrible in the microphone. Okay. So this curve is a bit extreme. I don't need that curve to be quite as high. which means I need to adjust the top. <laughs> you guys are so sweet. dark sort of shadowy bit underneath here like that and then you've got this funky tail area which I think the slug the point of it is so that it looks like a little anemone or something maybe <coughs> ah, excuse me to distract predators from thinking that they were food uh, okay, so the first little frilly bit is 
and you grab like that. This feather. There should be another piece here. <laughs> Marie just ate a waiting pizza. <laughs> I hope you feel satisfied. <laughs> uh, ducks. That'll do. I don't even care if it's too big for the slug. It doesn't matter. It's really just a funny shape with beautiful colors that we're drawing. That's it. Now that we have the first slug down, we can sort of work out where things are going for the second slug. Which I only noticed it was a second slug, I think yesterday or the day before. No, yesterday when I posted the or edited the event on YouTube, this live event. And then um, I was like, let's draw a sea slug. And I'm like, I oh know, there's two, let's draw two sea slugs. He has the bum of one and we're about to draw the bum of the other. So the frilly bits is the backside of the slug. Slugs. So this part is pretty much going straight up. So this antenna should really be here. Or, let's see. So I'm going to draw this here. Just put in a shape. And then I haven't done the front bit far enough. According to the antennas. So let's just take it a bit further. My dogs are even so tired they didn't want to wake up with me this morning. So they're still lying in bed, snug asleep with, with my boyfriend. <laughs> They're like, nah, ain't doing it. Okay, so that goes about 
there. I'm just going to go up there. And next to the side of this frilly bit is where the side of this slug starts. It's not completely smooth, it's almost like it's a little bit bumpy. bumpy. Okay, now we have a better reference point for the rest of the slug. So, going up here, a little curve like that. And it needs to go straight up like that. Yeah, right, like he's going to prepare breakfast. <laughs> no, I'll probably end up going back in bed, go, going back to bed after this. And then when I get up, he'll probably still be sleeping because he's on afternoon shifts. And then I'll be making him breakfast. That will just be the way it is. But I don't mind. I don't mind. That's the least I can do for all the hard work he does. His work is what allows me to be home. Plus, because I'm vegan, it's just too hard for him to prep stuff for me. I'm too picky in everything. He's, he still eats everything, so it's easy for me to prep food for him and just prep food for myself. <laughs> instead of complicating things okay so now the general shape of this is sort of like going like a rosebud maybe with a piece that's opening up on the side <laughs> Something like that. And Okay, and I can't really see much details in this outline, so I'll get to that later. So if I just have the outer outline done properly, then it'll be easy. I'm going to use masking fluid to block it in so that I can do the background without worrying about interfering with the main subject. And, yes, so... The background doesn't have that much detail. It's got like a little bit of shimmer on the rocks over here. Okay, so now that I'm looking at the actual image, I can see a little bit more. So I'm looking at the, the main reference. There's a little bit of a highlighted area um, on this side of the slug, which I think is actually the back slugs. Mm, maybe not, I don't know. Maybe there's another slug hidden in there. <laughs> Just out of sight. Okay. So that's there. And then there will be some squiggly rocks in that here. This will be covered in the background and we can add to that afterwards with a pencil. So in the background I'm going to be using a black pan pastel and a... Pithello Blue Extra Dark Pan Pastel. Just those two. Any other colors that need to be added can be added with our colored pencils. 
But yes, yeah, so that's the outline. Very, very simple, basic, nothing too detailed. It doesn't have to be. Uh, I'm just going to check it all again. Um, when I pull off the masking fluid, most of these lines are going to come off a little bit. So I might have to add a little bit more detail again before adding the colored pencils. Just checking that. I'm okay with that. Okay. Radio. So I'm actually going to come up with the pan pastels all the way along the side of the white. Um, because it's like you've got such a dark background fading into lighter areas, you, you don't just want to have a solid line next to the black. I'd rather add in a bit of the pink on the bottom area with my pencils than um, try and compensate by putting black into that later. <laughs> okay, let me move that forward like that a little. So my camera's still recording, all good. My other one. Now, now we're gonna add some masking fluid. So I pull my masking fluid, so I get a big 600 ml bottle and it's called Art Source, I think. Let me get it. It's called National Art Materials and it's a 500 ml bottle, sorry. And then I just pour it into a little bottle like this with a little nozzle. So I pour it into a little bottle like this with a little nozzle. I just got this online at Eckersley's Art Store here in Australia. Um, so see if you can find a little bottle like this with a small little nozzle. Because painting masking fluid is a real pain in the bum. I hate painting with this stuff. It ruins your brush. You can't get smooth edges. And this, when the tip dries, you just pull it off like I just did. And you just carry on. So you can use this to draw your masking fluid into the area that needs to stay protected. So that's what we're going to do now. If you don't have it, that's fine. Um, just work carefully around your edges, that's all when you do the background. I hate the smell of this stuff, it stinks. It's got such a sour smell. Try and fill it in with a very light layer so it doesn't take too long. It's not too thick so it won't take too long to dry. That's the aim. Because we have to wait for this to dry before we're going to go all around it with our sponges with the pan pastel powder. So I've got my paper firmly taped down. 
so you'll see it it's sort of moving a bit because it's getting wet but it will dry flat after so it's all good that's just what water paper does when it gets wet as long as you've got the edges taped down properly it will lose the warp and dry it flat so all good probably didn't even need to fill the whole thing in but I am quite a messy worker so I'll just be safe since sorry and I don't have to worry about how far I go over the image with my pen pastels I can be quite rough with it I guess okay so now we're just gonna wait a little bit for that to dry I'm gonna have some tea and ask questions. Could you work on Ali? Uh, when, Alex? I have to redo the whole bottom section. I'll show you what it looks like now. So I'll see if I can just take the webcam and sort of show you like that. I know there's a pipe in the way. Uh, this is as far this is as far as I can take it. But yeah, the the whole bottom I applied with um, a watercolor ground to give it texture because what I did before with the airbrush and the pencils and everything ended up when I apply the oil paint it moves around so I had to sort of rebase that entire section so that I can start over with it so this piece has pretty much become a little bit of a piece of my nightmares because it's that I had to redo so much and it was just I left it for a while and then I work with it for a little bit and then I leave it again for a long while and I really really should get it done at least the guy commissioning it is really, really friendly about it and he's no, in no rush to get it. Although I sort of wish he was in a rush to get it because that would put more pressure on me. Uh, because I, I sort of just don't want to look at it anymore. <laughs> the last four weeks. I haven't been recording it. so be, as Some of you may remember that when I, um, I recorded a lot of it in the beginning and then I thought I had to start over again and I did start over again because I couldn't apply pencils to this board um, and I did start over again and then when I when I started over again I deleted all the video content that I'd recorded before so now I don't have video content for it so I can't show you guys how I've been going up and down with this piece since I decided to come back to this one and use oil paints instead of pencils. Yes, a dry brushing works really good. It's the only what the only method I could actually use to to save it. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Mm, such a tasty melon.
the click. Okay, so I'm just gonna use the sponges I used last week. It's still got green in that on it, but because we're using such dark colors, it's okay. So I'm taking a bit of um, tissue paper. And I'm going to just wipe off any of the excess green. start adding in some of the black and I'll just be a bit slower when I come to the edges because it still looks pretty wet. Hey Stephanie, that's, those are the only videos I have. I've done so much more since then that um yeah it's just not a, i can't make a time lapse out of it i i can only show you a continuation of what i'm doing now maybe i could stream a bit more when i start again next time i could do that for you guys if you wanted okay so i'm using the black oh. we're not using the outline anymore so now we're actually looking at the colors. Uh, and the fixative that I'm using is the Mikador Workable Matte Fixative. Uh, I don't have that much left in there, so hopefully it'll get us through this tutorial. Otherwise, I have to use the brush and pencil textured fixative because that's the only other one I have. Which I prefer not to use when I'm using smooth watercolor paper. I like using the brush and pencil fixative when I'm using textured or sanded paper. So you don't have to use pan pastels for the background, you can um, use your pencils and blend them in and do a couple of layers. It will take a fair bit longer, but you can still use your pencils for your background. And use your solvent to blend. And yeah, build it up that way. I literally love pan pastels just for backgrounds so I can block in something quickly. They're also great for skin tones. <laughs> but I don't do many portraits, do I? So I'm going into this bottom section of the slug, even though there's pink there. And I will add the pink later because it's, it's so dark that I'd rather add the pencil pink over the top of the black background than add a, back, a background area back over the bottom of the slug. I hope I'm saying that in a comprehensible way. I do lack the explanation or descriptive skills. I'm more of a showing people what to do instead of explaining what to do kind of person. <laughs> okay, so the idea is to be able to go this close with 
the masking tape, the fluid there, so that you don't have to. Um, so that you get your nice sharp edges that you want. And because the edges of the slug are so sharp, uh, it's it's pretty easy. Or well, it it works fine to use masking fluid. And that's the point I'm trying to make. Whereas if you want something with really soft edges, you can still do this, but you'll just have to create the soft edges with your pencils later. So the edges are pretty dry. So I can get this in now. I just must be careful not to go too close to the real wet areas. <laughs> Thanks, Stephanie. Yeah, I need to use the airbrush again. Maybe I should use the airbrush to block in the bottom section of the Muhammad Ali I don't know I don't want to think about it Okay, now I'm going to add some of the blue. I'll just keep using the same sponge. Mm. I still need to add black in here, sorry. Okay, now blue. So it is becoming a big powdery mess. So I'm going to be blowing the powder off in a minute and then sealing it with fixative and then repeating the process. So you have to do that with pan pastels because it moves around a lot the more you add it. And because I add it so thick, because I want it to really cover, I'm going to have to do two or three layers. Okay. Now I'm going to use my fixative, making sure that um, I just get my phone out the way and cover my watch. We'll just move it and remember to put it back. Okay. So there's really not much left, so I have to go at an angle. I need to cover my iPad too. Hey, Mojin! <laughs> I need to 
go back a few messages. So I'm just trying to vent that and get it to dry. It dries pretty quick. I don't I do not like the smell. Okay, so this can go back. <coughs> We're already 40 minutes in. Jean says that she bought some colorless masking fluid by Windsor & Newton, haven't used it yet. Yeah, let me know how that goes. Um, I would highly recommend you try and get a little bottle like this, one with a small nozzle. Because painting masking fluid on is just a real pain in the bum. And it, it's, it really wrecks whatever brush you're using. Looks like the shape of a dog or a fox. <laughs> it does too, a little cartoony one. Marie says she can't buy Mikador where she lives. She has to use Spectra Fix. Uh, I haven't heard of that one and I haven't used it. Uh, I don't know, you have to just test it and try it for yourself. So if you can find a mat workable fixative then um, and it says on it that it's for pencil work then um, it should be fine because that's what it's made for right <laughs> okay so that has dried so we can come over that a little bit more again you want to. So now I'm going to use more of the blue which is going to make it pop. I want the blue here. Definitely want the blue here. Alex is asking if I've used, if I've tried a color shaper. What's a color shaper? a little bit of tissue to Okay, I'm going to spray that again.
Okay, I think that's the last that I'm going to get out of this. I've used them when I've used um, pastels, but not so much for, I haven't used them pan pastels because I haven't really needed to, I guess, because I just use the pan pastels to block in a big area. Yes, that's right. Jason Morgan did a video on several different fixatives. So it'll, yeah, definitely check that out. Okay, so now we're gonna put some color in with our pencils um, in the background because we are still waiting on the um, masking fluid to dry and it's gonna take a bit longer now because I sprayed it with so much fixative. So we may as well do the background. Hmm. So, I think I'm going to use some light, sort of bluish grey colours to bring out the, some of the rocks over here. Oh, let's put that back. Um, and I'm using the Muted Turquoise PC1088. I'm just picking this color randomly. It's not necessarily what you need to use. You can use whatever you want. So there's some highlights in some of these um, rocks. So I'm just gonna use little squiggles almost to make it seem like there's highlights. So this is giving the illusion of something without making it complicated. Because you don't want to draw every detail of a rock. That'll just be boring and frustrating and unnecessary. <laughs> so I'm still looking at my reference. I'm not worried about being super detailed but it does give me an indication of where to add highlights roughly or extra shapes that I could be adding You guys are so useful to have around. Thank you for providing all that information. And then there's the slightest hint of rocks over here as well. It's very windy outside. How crazy has the weather been around the world? Far out. It's like, what next?
Okay, that looks really silly for now, but that's okay. It's just the beginning. Now I'm going to use some different grades. So I will come in with the 70% raw gray, PC1056. Add some more spotty sort of areas. I so wish the pan pastel black was darker, much darker. It's very matte. I like it to be completely black. So I'm actually going to use indigo blue. See how dark that is, if it's darker than my black background. A little bit. So that's a good color right now since I've sort of like sealed the bottom pan pastel layer with the fixative I could draw all over this with pencil and then blend it with my solvent so you can definitely do that so where is my black here I just want to see how much darker my black is to the pan pastel black not much. My indigo blue is actually darker than my black. It's weird. Okay. So using scribbly, squiggly tones with my indigo blue PC901. Just going to continue. Adding the darker areas. I am by no means being exact with this at all. tempted to cover the entire background <laughs> with this blue because it's darker than the black You know what? I'm going to block in the background with this blue. Try not to move my masking fluid. <laughs> I'm using the side of my pencil. I'll just be quicker. I'm not too worried about streaks because I'm going to blend it with my solvent and a tissue and that will make it look smoother. Careful not to scratch your paper with the wood part of your pencil.
may as well add some nice a few other nice blues maybe a hint of some purples so I think I know exactly what purple I want to use I want to use in in Dantron blue PC 208 which is like a blue purple mixing some of these colors in some of these areas okay what else do we want to add in there Maybe Ooh. I love this sort of um let's give it a prisma color. Um, this one. The peacock blue PC one oh two seven. This is such a beautiful color. hints of it okay and for now we will leave it at that so I've got my zested solvent in a little bottle like this um, you can use whatever solvent you want your odorless solvent whatever brand works for you it doesn't have to be zested any odorless solvent will do the trick. Um, Zested is probably just the safer one out of all the picks if you can get your hands on it. I think in the UK you can. It's I think it's originally from the UK, I'm pretty sure. It's just in the US where people struggle to get it. And then I've dipped a little bit of my piece of tissue in there. And now I'm going to blend the pencil. And it's going to make all those strokes look nice and smooth. little goes a long way where's my brush So it would have been cool if we actually used the black ink like we did in the owl because then the background will be really black. But this is just going to have to do. So using the indigo blue again, I'm going to create little scribbles. Just to sort of indicate darker shadows in the rock. And then we can probably get to the, we're getting closer to the point of starting the slugs. So 
we are a little more than an hour in. So prep time and that still it takes time. It's not I think just prepping your artworks is something that's takes a bit of time and then doing the background you shouldn't waste time on a background just because it's a background it's still important That's a bit better. When you work with black, a black background like that, the reflection really makes it hard to see the reflection from your daylight lamps so i think i might just leave them off there is a bit of a reflection on this side but i mean we still need some light to be able to see so uh, needs to be up higher Alex says it sounds as if it is difficult to get color on the background with pencils. Um, no, it's just a little more time consuming. That's all. If you're going to work with pencils, you've got to be patient. It is a time consuming medium. Especially if you're aiming for realism. But I mean, even if I wasn't aiming for realism and I was just getting patterns in and these beautiful colors, it would still make a nice artwork. So you could maybe try and aim for something different other than realism, just a beautiful artwork, but use the starting processes of the approach of realism drawing. Oh, I'm using the Indanthrone Blue again, PC208. To add a few more purpley sort of tones and then I'll add some lighter colors you can definitely see my iPad better now as well because there's not that many reflections from the lights next to it so I want to use the peacock blue PC1027 and give an indication of some more interesting things happening in the background. I think there's some sort of coral or something, or maybe um, just a sea plant, some sort of sea plant there. Stephanie's asking how many classes have I taken for the airbrushing? Um, I did a whole term, so I think 
um, I did eight classes of three to four hours. Um, I went every Wednesday night for classes for a while. So eight, no, I did two terms. I did two terms because I did the Audrey Hepburn um, in my second term. So 12, 12 classes of three to four hours. I definitely recommend doing an airbrush course if you're going to try it um, because it, it teaches you the right mechanics straight up from the beginning because it's, it's a very different concept to using paint or pencils and that because you have to train your brain to do something completely different with what you're holding in your hand. So it can be quite quite a difficult thing to put yourself through self-teaching you can do it it's possible i mean there's a lot of content on youtube but i do think it would be easier for for you if you um just did a course okay what other beautiful colors have we got maybe we'll use a green like an aqua sort of green so using Parrot Green, PC1006. Hey, Marjean, you could use a sponge zested if you wanted. Sure. I'm quite okay with using a piece of tissue. I guess whatever you decide. The sponge would absorb it all though, like I guess with the tissue because there's not that much tissue to absorb a lot um, I don't know I don't know which would be better I guess it's something worth testing I'm just adding subtle little pieces of color around to make it seem like there's something there but no detail. Oh, my chair is sinking. be good to use some of the pinks that we have in our slugs as well okay so using mulberry PC995 I'm going to add some purple tones in the background as well. So I use the side of the tip of my pencil to give and use like circular motions to to just add the color, no detail.
Okay. And I'm gonna use non photo blue PC nine one nine. To really add some highlights in here. So it's almost like we're defining something there. I'm just guessing some patterns as well. Don't have to be exact. using this to add little lighter highlighting areas because it is quite a light blue so you can use it to add more definition to the rocks and then I feel like I can really get carried away with the background but we need to start the slug okay so Using the same tissue, I'm going to dab. I didn't re dip anything because there's still enough solvent on here. And then blend the background up again. Okay, so it looks like there's a little more happening in the background. The background's not so boring anymore. Mm, okay, now we're going to move, remove the masking fluid. Use a brush whenever you want to get any excess things off because your hand your hand will always have extra um, I guess natural oils in that on it and then that can affect the movement of the color on your paper and I just touched it in saying that <laughs> Jean says, I really like the effect you're creating. I wanted to do a similar effect for the beta fish, but it didn't work out. Oh, didn't it? You, know, you have to have a play with it and, and just experiment more and more, I guess. And quite a lot of the time, I just hope for the best. <laughs> and, it, and it would work out. So you just have to have fun with it and not criticize yourself. Because 
I find when you start criticizing yourself, you stop enjoying it and you make mistakes and it doesn't work out for you. But the minute you just let loose and just let it happen, it's all good. Okay, I'm using a little bit of the Neon Pink PC1038. I'm going to add some, some nice pink here. So we will definitely be using this, this pink in the slugs. So now we want to look for our colors. So the way to do that, uh, I've got so much happening here right now. Let's see. Is to use your color swatches. So let's pick some colors. I can immediately see with my Prisma color swatch there's a lot of colors just in this swatch that I want already. There are a few in the Polychromo swatch, but not as much. So I think my this tutorial is going to be more Prisma colors than anything else. So far we've only used Prisma colors, so we could probably just just stick to using Prisma colors. There's quite a few colors on this. Let's just stick to using Prisma colors and see how we go. Okay. So that is 1038. So we've got the neon pink out already which is number 1038 um, and then we will also ooh, number 930 is beautiful so now the only downfall about these trays is that I can't see the numbers so I need to look at the swatch carefully ah. <laughs> there we go, number 930 which is magenta. Um, we'll use number 925, which I think would be more red. Nine twenty five is Crimson Lake. We'll use number one ninety five. is pomegranate. We'll also use number 994 which is process red and for these lighter areas we'll use a bit of 993 which is a pink. 993 is hot pink and there's some lighter purple tones. Uh, so we'll use nine five six. Nine five six, which is lilac. And the real light color we'll use 1026 Grade Lavender. So we've got our P1038 
pinks and purples, this really beautiful dark color there, 10078. 1078 is black cherry. Beautiful. We've already got our indigo blue. Um, I think we already have. Do we? No. 1009. 1009, which is Dahlia Purple. Got some of that. 1030. Do we have 1030? No. 1030 is raspberry. So that is in the tail area there. Okay. I think I can make do with those colors for all the pinks. Now we need some of these beautiful bright oranges. So definitely got 922. 922 is poppy red. We've already got 925 with these oranges. We can use 1032. One o three two is pumpkin orange. And the The lighter orange one o o two. Yellowed orange PC one o o two. One o three four, which I think is golden rod. Yep, golden rod PC one o three four. Okay, so I'm happy with those, and then we've got some light blues for the bottom section. So it doesn't matter what sets of pencils you have, if you create swatches like this, it's the same process for anything. If you're looking for your colors, you don't have to have all of them. Just use what you have and find your colors that way. So number 919. Oh gosh, this is going to be hard.
we'll use 1087 which is powder blue Go on, 103. 1103, which is Caribbean Sea, PC1103. And for the darker blue, we've got Indigo Blue and 903. Light Cerulean Blue, PC904, and let's go see if we can find 903. And True Blue, PC903. Okay, we've got our colors, and now let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I actually want to work on the bottom section so that we can get that finished and out of the way. So I'm going to compare my swatch again to my reference to make sure I'm picking the right color. And I want to use number 195. 195 for some of the dark area. And number 995. I'm going to use these two colors and then that real dark, real dark color. The 1095, no, 1078. Okay, so these are my three colors that I'm going to use on this bottom section here and I'm going to zoom in. So I'm just going to sharpen one pencil. Okay, so using the darker color first, so Black Cherry PC1078. Yes, I am recording, thank you. So far so good, I haven't missed it yet. Uh, yeah, I also really wish that Prismas and Polys had this, I mean, I also wish that um, Luminance pencils had the same range as the Prismas. <laughs> Alex says you can never have enough colors, that's true. Okay, so I'm using the black cherry and I'm going to start filling in where I think I need the dark shadows. And then using the pomegranate PC1095, I want to add in that lighter color. So we're going to softly start going into this dark area at the bottom. And it's still going to be a subtle transition instead of being a sort of solid line. Uh, I 
don't know if you guys can see that so well. It's not so easy to see. But you'll get it. Um, the quality of this video should be good enough for you guys to really zoom in quite far. So watch it on a full screen. Through Obviously you're watching through YouTube, otherwise you can't get to the chat. But yeah, watch it on full screen and hopefully you can see it then. I can only see what I'm recording on a real small area. So um, I'm not quite sure what you guys can see yet. going to use some of the Mulberry PC995 soften these edges further a little bit of the hot pink PC993 and try and brighten this area up. And if you find that you get an area like this that you can't brighten up enough, we can seal it with the fixative and then try and come over with our wax based pencils even further. And then I'm going to use my hot pink, I mean my neon pink PC1038. See how we go. So I'm, I can't get that color on there. So I've sort of overdone it a little. So I'll have to apply a bit more texture back over the top. But anyway, so now using the black cherry PC1078, I want to carry on with the transition into the background or the the bottom of the slug so it's a smooth transition into the dark background Year. Now I can see this really beautiful purple, like it's a super bright purple, and I don't think I looked for the color for it when I did the swatch. Where did I? This one. So using Violet PC932, I want to pop that color in there. like that. So this edge here, this tip, is a lot pointier than that. Ooh, that's pretty. I'm going to use it here too. 
might even add a little bit of it in here. Love it. Okay, see how the transition looks nice and smooth? It doesn't look too, too harsh. Look at my finger. It's got like a dent in it from the pencil. <laughs> I have a little mini gallus there from all the drawing. The physical um, distinctions show. <laughs> Okay, I'm using my pomegranate PC195 again. And alright. So now I want to use my white wax base pencil and I just want to add this highlight over here gently. Sort of blend it in with the color that's underneath it. Okay, and then I'm going to, with the side of it, try and add a little bit of white there. Okay, so that needs to be way more neon pink, but I'm going to worry about that later. Um, so we'll do that when we get towards the finishing touches. Okay, now we want to do this real funky body of the slug. So again, just making sure I'm picking the right color. I'm going to pick the dark tone. So we are again using our black cherry PC1078. And I'm going to put in that dark shadow. So paying attention to my reference and using the side of the tip of my pencil. So, and I hold the pencil to sort of in the middle towards the back and that prevents me from putting too much pressure down. So I know when I do my workshops, a lot of people struggle with the whole concept of how much pressure to actually put down. So I try and encourage them to hold the back of their pencil because <laughs> most people in the workshop are actually quite heavy handed. So that's one way to stop them from being heavy handed is to hold the back of your pencil. This is the darkest area. And we'll use some of it as well over here. And it does go into these areas here okay so I am looking at the blurred version now sorry I should have been looking at it before but there's actually not that much detail you know and I'm not even gonna worry about the blurred version there's not that much detail for you to get too confused with your layering so um, so it's up to you if you want to use the blurred version to do your base colors. See how you feel. Right, 
then comparing my colors. Using dark purple PC931, I'm going to go over the color I just put down again and push the color a little bit further where I think it might be necessary. And I just want to check Patreon real quick, make sure there's no one that's stuck. Everybody's good this time. So using dark purple, PC931 still. And if the sun's coming up. Using 956, which is lilac, I want to add the light colors. So you can pretty much add this color everywhere, so that would be like your base color. Perfect. So using 195 pomegranate, I'm going to start adding the red tones. I'm starting to get tired. <laughs>
using the pink. I'm going to go over the light purple that I put down. So the pink and that purple are going to work really well together. So right now it looks really crayony and not like much. And that is okay. That's normal for your first layer. Once you blend it in with your solvent, that will all change. Using Magenta PC930. you doing that then you can draw something else while you watch this and sort of keep each other company in a sense okay using Dahlia purple PC 1009 I'm gonna add some of this over here I'm also going to use it to sharpen the top edge because it is quite a sharp edge over here. Using the pomegranate again. Okay, so now I'm going to blend this with my solvent just so I can get a better perspective of where I'm at and then we can adjust it accordingly. <laughs> so, taking my solvent, I'm going to use a number two brush. It's a Teclon brush um, and then I'm going to blend so remember I do it automatic but you dip and you dab onto your paper towel before you apply it to your paper you don't dip it and add it straight to your paper because then you automatically know that you're putting too much solvent down you got to gradually put your solvent on and gradually blend with your solvents. It's a slower process, but the slower you do it, the more accurately you'll do it. And it's, it's better than um, doing it in too much of a hurry because you just want to see that pigment pop out as soon as possible and then you saturate your paper with too much solvent and you blend your colors in more than what you need to. So if you just do it slowly, gradually, it's going to be much better. So that color is starting to look beautiful. So after you blend your first layer like this, and you still see the texture of your paper, that's fine. It's only after two, three, or four layers that the texture really starts to disappear properly. 
and that will happen without even having to use any pressure at all throughout the entire process. You're just gradually going to do light layers like this multiple times. That's all, that's all it is. That's the trick to realism in colored pencil drawings. <laughs> just gradually adding your layers lightly. <laughs> I'm going to pour it if I'm especially if you if you're covering a big surface it's so tempting to just put too much solvent on because you just want to cover that surface quickly one thing I'd like to encourage those that are starting off with pencils um, to do is start off with small drawings at a time I mean look at this this one's really small we're already two hours in and it's it's still a process I'm sorry, I'm in the beginning of the stream, I think I said that I only took two and a half hours on the praying mantis. That's not true. I took two and a half hours on the second stream of the praying mantis, but I think all up it was five and a bit hours that I spent on it. So this one should probably be about the same. I am really starting to feel... <laughs> feel my um I'm starting to really feel tired so I might carry on for a little bit and then what I will do is actually maybe later today I'll do a stream on YouTube for the rest of the drawing um and then so those on YouTube will only get access to part two but you guys on Patreon will get access to the most important part which was this part I haven't done a stream on YouTube in a very long time, so I think I'm due to do one. So maybe I'll just do this. And then, um, yeah. Then my DSLR is still recording, and I can add that little time lapse a bit later. Okay. So I'm just going to use a small little tip, not the dirty end, the clean end, and blend the bottom of the slug in so that you don't see that line I just put down with the solvent. And it's got a blending with the rest of it. There we go. Okay, so that's like the first layer. Now we're going to start... Maybe we'll add a bit more around the sides and then we can see how we go. <laughs> yep, Marie's really good. She underestimates her ability to do amazing drawings. Okay, so using the neon pink, <coughs> excuse me, and add where this really, really bright pink area is. And a little bit over here.
case and then using the hot pink PC993 Uh, Stephanie's saying that her background on the praying mantis seems grainy. Does this always happen with pan pastels? Um, no, mine's, mine's not grainy. It's really, really smooth. Um, are you using a sponge to blend your pan pastels? Or maybe use your finger wrapped around a piece of tissue? And see if that helps. Uh, the only other thing I can think of why it might be grainy is maybe the texture of your paper is sort of grainy but your first layer might be grainy and then if you spray it with a fixative and you add a second and third layer it might smooth it out a bit more so see see if that helps have you only done one layer using my black cherry PC 1078 to darken this up again or we'll just darken it up further so I'm still using a light hand even though it looks like I might be pressing a bit harder I'm not it's just because there's solvent still on my paper it still it helps bring the pigment out of the pencil using watercolor paper and mine's pretty smooth. I am using very smooth watercolor paper though and it, it's hot press. Yeah, you, I'm not sure what's happening then, Steph. Mine's really smooth. Don't understand why yours is grainy. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of the indigo blue in here. using yeah I'm also using hot press I'm pretty sure mine's hot press uh, using Dahlia Purple PC 1009 I'm gonna create that there is quite a distinctive line just on the top of the slug which is a little bit darker so I can add that So I want to blend that again, have a look 
Uh, actually, I might add the blue. So using powder blue PC1087, I'm going to add a layer in here. So that's going to be the lightest, lightest blue, or lightest part of this blue is this one. It's not white, you'll notice. use a bit of the true blue PC903 for the shadowed area. As well. Using a bit of my indigo blue. It really defines that line. Add a bit of light cerulean blue, PC904. Okay. And then before I blend, I actually want to add some of the orange in the antenna bits. So using poppy red, PC922. No. Alright guys, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna be off soon and then I'll finish this later on today, but you guys can always watch it um tomorrow. Cause my day is starting and yours is ending I think. So um yeah. I really wanna go back to bed. <laughs> but I'll carry on later today i'll live stream it on youtube because i haven't done one for a while um, but only you guys will get this first part of the tutorial youtube will just get the back end of it i guess um, i i can't remember the last time i've done something on youtube it's it's been a few months now i think <laughs> maybe two or three so it is time. Then using yellowed orange, PC1002, I'm gonna go over what I just did. And then using the uh, pumpkin orange PC1032, I'll fill in the dark areas. Mm, this one's always breaking. Okay, and then using 
the Crimson Lake PC925. And then using Black Cherry PC1078. Okay, now let's blend. Blend, and then that's going to be it for part one. I probably should have done the back slug first. <laughs> Usually you work from the background coming forward, but we should be alright. It's starting to look nice and smooth. How pretty does that blue look? Okay. So that is sort of the gist of it. Um, so we'd probably add another layer, but that is the process that we would take for the rest of this. We, we search for our colors, we put in our base colors, we layer it, see where we add, and then add further layers. Um, we're always using a soft hand and always paying attention to your reference and using your swatches all the time if you wanna make sure you're getting accurate colors. If you're not sure about accurate colors go ahead and guess if you um, are unsure about what so I think many of you would look at your reference and you would think that this entire section here is pretty white but very little of it is white it's almost entirely blue um, you can use your white like this to lighten it up once you've already applied your blue but um, yeah, so it's good to have your swatches just so that you could compare and see, uh, compare the color you think it is um, to the swatch and then you can see the difference in what the color really is because quite often you think a color is something and then when you compare it, 
and you look at the swatch you realize that um, <laughs> you were wrong <laughs> okay so now I'm going to use the white just to add some extra highlighted bits define this line a bit better And there's a little bit of a highlight here and when you're using such light hands between such a light hand between your layers it's easy to put your lighter wax colors over the darker ones because they'll come out whereas if you use too much of a heavy hand it's hard to make things lighter just whatever excess you have left on your brush smooth out the white and there you have it I'll zoom out so you can get a better perspective but that's sort of the idea and we'll just carry on doing that for the rest of the rest of the slugs <laughs> um it'll be nice when we do this orange because then it'll really make a pop so i'm going to come back either later today or maybe even tomorrow to finish this off and um then we'll see how it goes so if you guys have any questions um, please comment in the description once the video is finished or comment in Patreon wherever you want and I will try and get to them as soon as I can. I am very very busy in my life at the moment so I may not get back to questions really quickly but I'll try and get back to them as soon as I can. Okay so thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys soon i'm not waking up again tomorrow at 2 a.m i'm sorry guys <laughs> i am struggling a bit this week but um you will still have both that you can look at and as far as i can tell none of you are trying this tutorial with me in real time so it doesn't matter if um i don't do it with you in real time if that makes sense <laughs> okay So I'm going back to sleep even though it is 25 past 5 in the morning and you guys would be getting ready for your nighttime sleep time. So good night to you guys and thank you for watching.